In this week's video, we'll cover rational decision making during inevitable stock market pullbacks. To view the video in full screen mode, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. To improve the clarity of the charts, use this icon in the lower right hand corner of your video player. We'll start this week by dovetailing on an analysis that we originally talked about on February 17th of this year. If you want to see that analysis, you can Google this title here. When we look at a pullback on a chart, that's quite a bit different than experiencing a pullback in real life where our account balances inevitably start to shrink. Therefore, this week we're going to expand on this concept here, the quote from Market Wizards. The secret is being as short-term or as long-term as you can stand depending on your trading style. In that analysis from earlier in the year, we used the simple and generic and for illustrative purposes only 100 day in blue, 200 day in red, and 300 day moving average in green. We noted that the present day, and the present day was February during this analysis, was similar to several historical periods. For this week's exercise, we're going to zero in on the October 1st, 2012 analysis, which was similar to February 16, 2017. In both cases, we saw a technical improvement earlier on these charts. You can see in 2017 here, the 100 day, the fastest moving averages on top here, similar in the October 2012 example. This is October of 2012, but the technical improvement actually starts earlier than that. So for this exercise, we're going to assume that we bought before October 1st, which is very, very similar to this case here because we began buying well before February 16th. So we'll start by looking backward on this chart and we'll focus in on July 3rd of 2012. Why do we pick that date? This is a logical date if we were using the 100, 200, and 300 day moving averages as guides for trend following that we might have entered new positions in the market. You can see on July 3rd, 2012, we have, for the most part, a full bore bullish look with blue, the fastest moving average on top, and the slopes of all three of the moving averages look like they're starting to turn up in a constructive manner. And we also have price breaking out of a multiple week consolidation box. If we flipped over to a weekly chart and looked at, for illustrative purposes, only the generic 30 week, 40 week, and 50 week, 30 in blue, 40 in red, 50 week in green. We also have a constructive look on July 3rd. We have a full bore bullish look with blue, the fastest moving average on top, and all three of the moving averages are starting to turn up in a constructive manner. We can also see the breakout from the multiple week consolidation. Therefore, let's flip back to the daily version of the chart. We're looking at the same day and let's assume that this is our hypothetical entry point based on these improving technicals. And to help illustrate the concepts in this week's video, we're going to assume that we invested a million dollars on this date and we diversified equally between SPY, the S&P 500, IWM, small caps, MDY, mid caps, DIA, or the diamonds, which is similar to the Dow Industrials, IYT, which invests in a diversified basket of transportation stocks. Now we'll take the hypothetical million dollar investment and walk forward from this point. This graph shows the balance of our hypothetical portfolio. Here's our entry point at a million dollars here. If we fast forward it out from July of 2012, which was our entry point out to September of 2012, we got off to a good start. 5.1% gain here. So let's check our daily and our weekly charts to see if we have sell signals or stay the course type signals. I'm gonna to flip to another chart, point A, which is September 14th, 2012. This is the S&P 500 on the same day. This is the same point A here, and you can see our 100, 200, and 300 for illustrative purposes only moving averages look fine. 
There's nothing here that would say it's time to liquidate our portfolio and nail down this 5.1% gain. Similar situation with our weekly moving averages, the 30, 40, and 50. When we have that 5.1% gain at point A in September of 2012, we still have a full bore bullish look, a constructive look that tells us the probability of good things happening, looking out weeks, months, and years remains favorable. We're not talking about minutes, hours, or days. In videos over the past several weeks and months, we've talked about inevitable pullbacks. And in this case, we did get in an inevitable pullback from point A, we'll walk forward. Markets never make anything easy on any one. Our hypothetical million dollar investment was up 5.1% at point A. Unfortunately, we had one of those inevitable givebacks and we went from a 5.1% gain down to a 3.16% loss relative to our original entry point. At this point here, our emotions are starting to come into play. So it's logical and rational. So look at our trend following tools are for illustrative purposes, only trend following tools. We're using these trend following tools to illustrate generic concepts. These aren't the moving averages that the model uses, and these aren't necessarily the timeframes that we use, but we do use very, very similar concepts. So our profit and loss has taken a hit on November 15th, 2012. How do our moving averages look? Do they say it's volatility to ignore within the context of an ongoing uptrend or volatility to respect and it looks like the trends are rolling over? Here's our same point B here. Now our portfolio is at a 3% loss in November of 2012 and our 100, 200 and 300 are showing a little bit of strain but for the most part, this is still a full bore bullish look with blue, the fastest moving average on top. If we were making decisions based solely and hypothetically on these three moving averages only, we would classify this move here as volatility to ignore. And if we checked in on our weekly charts, when we had a 3.16% loss in November of 2012, this is starting to show some strain, but we still have blue, our fastest moving average on top, we don't have any moving average crossovers. This is telling us to pay closer attention, but it would still classify this as volatility to ignore. So if we were making decisions based purely on emotions and profit and loss, we might liquidate here. If we looked at our moving averages and zoomed in here, the weekly moving averages zooming in, this is the same look here, just a little closer. You can see blue is still on top and two out of our three moving averages still have a positive slope. The daily chart, we still have a full bore bullish look at point B here on November 15th, 2012, with blue the fastest moving average on top. And the slopes of all three moving averages, mathematically, they're flattish, but they're still positive on this day here. The math is telling us to pay closer attention, but it's not telling us to run for the exits. Things were going well up here. This is an emotional drawdown as well as a financial drawdown. This is roughly an 8% drawdown in our portfolios from point A to point B here. And undoubtedly, this is going to be discouraging. And it would be easy to say the trend following does not work when you move from a 5% gain to a 3% loss. But if we kept our discipline took emotions out of the equation at this point here, our weekly and our daily moving averages are saying, try to be patient. Therefore, it's logical to ask what happened after the significant pullback, during which our account balances fell, but the mathematical damage to the trends was really not particularly significant or alarming. Once again, we're looking at our portfolio balance of our hypothetical portfolio. We went from a million up 5%, then we had an 8% drawdown. What happened from here in terms of our diversified portfolio? In this case, our trend following tools were helpful. We went from point B here and our balance went all the way up to point C in calendar year 2015. The 61.83% gain is based on our original entry point or investment of a million dollars. 
And it's also logical to ask if our trend following tools were helpful in terms of classifying this drawdown as volatility to ignore, were those same trend following tools helpful to get us from point B all the way up to point C? Now we're looking at the same point A and point B. We're looking at the S&P 500 in this case as a guide. Here's the look of the 100, 200, and 300 day moving averages when we were down to a 3% loss. If we fast forward to point C, where these same trend following techniques, hypothetical and for illustrative purposes only techniques, helpful. In the S&P 500's case, the answer is yes. During the whole move, for the most part, we maintain a full bore bullish look with blue, the fastest moving average on top and the slopes of all three moving averages for the most part remain positive. Conceptually telling us that these pullbacks are classified as volatility to ignore within the context of an ongoing uptrend. And the key point is within the context of an ongoing uptrend says we know with 100% certainty if this trend by definition remains in place, this chart will eventually go on to make a higher high. Conversely, if our trends were rolling over and we had a full bore bearish look, our counter trend rallies would be moving in this direction. And we would know with 100% certainty that if the downtrend remained in place, that this counter trend move would be followed by a lower low by definition. Uptrends by definition make a series of higher highs. Downtrends, by definition, make a series of lower lows. Which brings us back to our market wizard's wisdom. The secret is being as short-term or as long-term as you can stand, depending on your trading style. In our case, it's as long-term as you can stand. The you can stand part acknowledges that this is difficult and this is going to be a drain on your emotional capital, and it's also going to be a drain on your account balance. If our focus is long term and we know that the trends are still in place, we know the probabilities say that this low here will eventually be followed by a higher high. We don't know how long that would take, and we also don't know if this is going to morph into a downtrend, but more often than not, these long-term trends stay in place. You can see here, we're not getting significant changes in the long-term trend over a long period of time. This is calendar year 2013. This is calendar year 2015. So if you treat this as a normal pullback within the context of an ongoing and established bullish trend, then our confidence is high and eventually our patience will be rewarded. Obviously, if this morphs into volatility to respect, that won't be true and the math will require that we take action. There was a reason that we covered this quote a few weeks ago because we knew a drawdown at some point was coming from market wizards. This is a question. In other words, in order to score the really large gains, like a 61% gain, you have to be willing to see those gains erode significantly before getting out of the market. You have to see those gains erode significantly before getting out of the market. The answer from the market wizard, I can't see any other way. If you get too careful about not risking your gains, you're not going to be able to extract a large profit. Before we close out the video, let's take a look at the present day market and the trends that we have in front of us now, the observable evidence that we have, the facts that we have in hand. Clients and regular viewers may remember back in February, we looked at the plunge from August of 2015 and compared the present day market. We'll do something similar, but we'll use a different technique and different moving averages in this case. If you know your market history, you may remember that August 18th was the day before a waterfall decline in the S&P 500 that was approximately a decline of 11% over just a handful of trading sessions. This is a daily chart. 
with a lot of uncertainty in the present day markets related to both fiscal and monetary policy, it's logical to ask how susceptible mathematically are we to a similar waterfall decline? Rather than looking at the market's profile after the plunge, it's more helpful if we know what the market's profile looked like before the plunge, which was August 18th of 2015. Still looking at a daily chart here. This is before the waterfall plunge or August 18th chart. We have simple and generic and for illustrative purposes only moving averages. We have the 35, 40, 50, 55, 60, 65, and 70 day moving averages. You can see here, this is a indecisive, confused, and vulnerable market from a trend and mathematical perspective. How do we know that? Before the plunge, we can see this before it happened. Our fastest moving average blue is on the bottom. And our slowest moving average, the 70 day, is on the top. It's a complete reversal from this bullish look here where blue, the fastest moving average, was on top. And here we had the slowest moving average on the bottom. We can also use moving averages in a similar manner to price. The blue moving average last made a high almost three months ago. It tried to challenge that high here and failed. So this market is very jittery and indecisive. And we also have somewhat of a sideways look here. These moving averages haven't made much progress telling us that we might get a big move in this direction or in this direction. On August 18th, the risk looks to be to the downside because for the most part, we have a full bore bearish look in here. Therefore, we can learn something about the present day by looking at these exact same moving averages going backwards about three months as of March 24th, 2017. Rather than having this schizophrenic and indecisive and higher risk profile here, this is a high conviction look here. This is a full bore bullish look with blue, the fastest moving average on top, brown, the slowest moving average on the bottom and the slopes of all of the moving averages remain up. All of these charts help us with the probability of good things happening relative to the probability of bad things happening. It is unequivocally clear that the probability of bad things happening here is quite a bit higher than the probability of a 10% waterfall decline here. It's extremely important to note the probability of bad things happening, including a 10% waterfall decline, those probabilities never drop to zero. Anything is possible at any time, but we can make more prudent decisions from a risk reward perspective if we understand the market's current profile. The way we use this is we monitor and adjust if necessary. So monitor is on March 24, 2017, are we allocated properly based on the market's current profile? If the answer is yes, or I'm not sure, when in doubt, leave it alone. If the answer is no and things are starting to change, then we make an incremental adjustment to get back in line. Is it possible that this chart here morphs into something like this? The answer is absolutely positively yes, but most likely that would take time. And even if we did get a waterfall decline out of this look here, History tells us that typically when you get a sharp plunge out of a strong mathematical profile, that eventually and relatively soon thereafter, within a matter of days, weeks, or months, the market writes itself and goes on to make a higher high. Think 1987. 1987, the market's mathematical profile isn't this strong, but it's not particularly weak either. And the crash in 1987 did not kick off a multiple year bear market where the S&P 500 lost between 50 and 70%. The market crashed in October of 1987 and bottomed in December and then went on to make a higher high. Earlier in the video, we showed that basic trend following techniques were helpful during this drawdown in November of 2000. 
and 12. Therefore, it's logical to ask, how do these exact same, for illustrative purposes only, moving averages look in 2017? We'll start with the weekly 30, 40, and 50 week moving averages on March 24th, 2017. We're maintaining a full bore bullish look. What this tells us is the probability of a pullback being followed by a higher high eventually is a relatively high probability with a strong look like this. Similar situation on the daily chart, the 100, 200, and 300 simple moving averages here in blue, red, and green tell us the same thing. This is a high conviction look. Typically out of a look like this, a pullback will be bought. And even under the worst case scenario, typically like this, even if you were about to roll over, typically you would roll over and then come back up and retest this high here. And it would take time and it would take time for the math and the technicals to deteriorate. In this case, it took roughly three months for the math and the technicals to deteriorate before the waterfall plunge in August of 2015. If our game plan is to use these charts to monitor and adjust rather than anticipate and hope, that means we're not using these charts to forecast. We're simply looking at the probability of good things happening relative to the probability of bad things happening. We can also learn a lot about the market's tolerance for risk by looking at asset class behavior. You can find a detailed analysis here on See It Market by Googling this title here. This is risk off TLT relative to risk on SPY. You can see here the conviction to own defensive oriented bonds started to turn up as the S&P 500 peaked here late in calendar year 2007. Similar situation when the stock market is peaking as the dot-com bubble is bursting, the conviction to own defensive oriented long-term treasury bonds is starting to gain traction relative to the conviction to own growth-oriented stocks. This is what a migration to defensive assets looks like. Are we seeing a similar migration in the present day? Said another way, how do these same charts look in 2017? This is a full bore bullish look here in favor of bonds. This is a full bore bullish look here in favor of bonds. This is a full bore bearish look in the present day against bonds relative to stocks. It is possible that this chart here could morph into something like this. However, we monitor and adjust rather than anticipate and hope based on the facts that we have in hand as of March 24th, 2017. Thus far, we're classifying the majority of the volatility that we've seen as volatility to ignore. And given the drawdowns that we've experienced in March of 2017, that might feel a little bit uncomfortable. However, the only way we can stick to our discipline is to do what's right not what feels comfortable. And going forward to properly discern between volatility to ignore and volatility to respect requires that always important, flexible, unbiased, and open mind. How do we track all of this and convert it into a usable and actionable format in a reasonable amount of time the sub-models, we answer binary questions, some of them manually done, some of them programmed in Excel, and we also enter in unbiased and hard data. The sub-models allow us to get a handle on the market's current profile, and the master CCM market model then looks at the current profile, compares it to past profiles, and recommends a prudent allocation between risk assets such as stocks and conservative assets such as bonds. Conservative assets can consist of cash, bonds, currencies, or any number of investment options.
If you'd like to learn more about the market model or our money management services, you can visit our website, follow along on Twitter, Facebook, read our blog, Short Takes, or watch past videos on the Shivako Capital channel on YouTube. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.